Hey guys, um, this video will be demonstrating the um, Gaia to Houdini bridge uh, tools uh, which have been added quite recently um, in the last update of Houdini. I believe there's been a talk about it on the SIGGRAPH. Um, they have been des demonstrating the new features that have been added to Houdini and uh, Gaia uh, bridge was one of them in there which is really cool. And I wanted to show also, um, I believe that might be a bug uh, related to the tool on on the way on how Houdini actually kind of reads the cache from Gaia kind of you can like for example change a parameter doesn't really update or maybe I'm doing something wrong so I'm just going to be demonstrating that and showing maybe trying to reproduce the bug in there so that the guys from side effects or DAX maybe can have a look at it and see if there's something that needs to be fixed in there okay so the way for example so in this case it's going to be like a really simple setup where we're just going to like kind of read a height map from Houdini kind of brings in, uh, brings it into Gaia, do some erosion, and then spits out the height map towards Houdini, and then we can see the results directly inside the Houdini viewport in there directly. Okay, so in Gaia first, what I'm gonna do is just create a file node just to kind of like kind of read the height map from Houdini from here, and then we're gonna add an erosion node. And once that is done, we're just going to create an output. We're going to link all these guys together. Output to input here. Uh, up next, we're going to expose the parameters. So you just select a node, and then you hit expose nodes, and then you select the file tick. And in this case, I'm just going to name it um, file input underscore input. Here we're just going to expose a couple of parameters. We're going to keep things very simple just to see if the parameters actually work. So I'm just going to expose the duration, strength, and maybe rock softness because there's a lot of parameters in there and just don't want to really kind of clutter the uh, interface later on. Just keep things very simple for now. And then later on, maybe if things work out quite well, we can add up, start adding other nodes and just make things a bit more like kind of complex and so on. And for the output node, we're just also going to expose this. And then we expose the file output. I'm just going to name it this file underscore output and close. All right. In terms of build, I'm just going to see some if there's anything. I'm not sure how this actually affects the XML that gets generated down the chain. Does it take into consideration if I do like ignore, ignore vertical scale? And then we close this and then save. And does does that actually change the XML and just add that as a parameter in there or like a, as a like a setup as a setting in there i'm not exactly sure there's like no real documentation about it it's like really new stuff and there's like even the guys at side effects didn't like to do any tutorial or documentation about how to use the the the, the new the new um gaia bridge nodes so i'm just gonna leave it as is for now so if i go to build again and then leave it as is usually you would find this at 1k i'm just gonna put it 2k and then we will save our Tor file. So this is eventually the file that's going to be read by Gaia, uh, by Houdini, sorry. And I'm going to put this inside a folder. Of course, you're going to, you want to put this somewhere where you can find it eventually. I'm just going to new folder and just Gaia Automation. And we'll just name this a test, test. test save this now if I go to the folder where, where I've saved the tour file it should have created an XML and in this case it has not okay I do save again oh never mind I need to maybe mark this for save by pressing F3 on the output Hit save. This is the part where I'm not exactly sure whether it is Gaia that actually creates the XML or is it through the Houdini where the XML gets generated. So, okay, let's move on forward and see if the XML gets generated. Otherwise, we can still kind of figure out how this work actually exactly works. So, inside Houdini, we are going to start off with a height field nodes. 
and uh, in the viewport I'm just going to press spacebar F just to kind of focus on the object that is selected. We're going to enter the height fields. Since we've in Gaia we're just grabbing the height field from Houdini then running it through the erosion here in the middle and then spinning it out towards Houdini. Uh, so we need some sort of noise to erode, of course, like some sort of geological feature in there. So we're going to create a noise node, height field nodes, noise. Okay, here we have some noise. Maybe we want to distort this noise to just to make it a bit more interesting. We're not going to do something very complex. And then maybe play around with the element size and the amplitude <coughs> we're not doing like a really like a like cool terrain we just want to work on the functionality of it and then eventually you can expand of it on top of it later on all right so this is a step where we want to get like the Gaia bridge we want to erode this noise in there and just see if it works of course you need to have the game development tool set installed in my case I'm using the Houdini launcher so uh, you can look it up on Google, you just go to Houdini Launcher and you will go to the side effects uh, website and this will just help you to install any version of Houdini uh, based on a license that you have. Maybe handle how Houdini Engine actually works if you want to install it to Unreal Unity or whatever other DDC, DCC package you're using and the game dev tool sets you can add it through, through here as well. This is really cool stuff. You don't need to like kind of go to the website and download this web manually, or maybe add a, like a new shelf over here and just to have it man uh, download. So, kind of help you do a lot of the stuff automatically, and you don't have to fiddle around too much. You just need to like kind of couple clicks and it downloads all the stuff that you need. And it's really really cool stuff. All right. So since we have the game dev tool set already inside Houdini, so we don't need to think too much about it. We just simply look up for Gaia by hitting the tab key and just type in Gaia. And then there it is. All right. First thing you would see here. So the first parameter, this is where you look at the tor file. Um, this is the, if you remember correctly, this is the file that we saved earlier. Then the Gaia location where Gaia is installed. So for me, by default, I just simply install Gaia and it's by default in the program files spinner guy or maybe you want to, maybe you've saved it to on a different drive so you need to look it up and just put it to the correct uh, path pointed towards the, the correct path and this is where the cache directory is basically what the, what Houdini does I'm guessing is probably like kind of render out your height map that you have inside Houdini and then it just spits it out as a PNG or an um, EXR I'm not sure exactly how it's exactly saved um, but then uh, Gaia kind of <coughs> takes over, does the erosion, then saves the uh, image file and automatically this node actually picks up the image file and then uh, sh uh, displays it inside um, Houdini. So that's the way it should work. All right, so I'm going to look up the tour file that I've saved earlier. Uh, da, da, da. So in my case, it was in Gaia Autom Automation, Gaia Automation. Okay. Hit accept here. So there it is. So yeah. So no, I'm guessing the XML gets generated as soon as you open up the tour file. Your parameters gets created. Your X, uh, your XML gets created. So if you open this up, you see the parameters that have been exposed inside Gaia, inside a, inside, a, and then that is saved inside a tour file. <coughs> and it's over here. Basically, you you could potentially even by hand like add in type in some parameters. I uh, believe the I think maybe later on it would be really cool to have like some unique IDs for each parameters because maybe sometimes you have some parameters that actually have the same name and you might end up with having a conflict and your tor file will have an error as soon as you start opening it up and it will tell you all oh, this you have the, the the file parameter like showing up twice and you'll have and the tor file won't, the XML won't get generated and so you have to like kind of rename it for in my case I had this issue before where I just exposed the parameters from the file nodes and I believe there's probably another file node that has like it used to be named file only and there's like another parameter that has the exact same name and it didn't it didn't want to work so I had to rename it it would be cool to have like the unique ID uh, thing in there that can that would definitely help like to kind of avoid those kind of conflicts in there so the file nodes that we have in here should be this guy over here so as the parameter has been exposed 
So we will point it towards the heights. And from Gaia, that's to, to Gaia, then from Gaia, also heights. Alright, so to Gaia, you get the heights, chain go, uh, the heights going through here. And then from Gaia, you're going to get, <coughs> you want to process the height map eventually. Now, we should be able to hit the cook button and have it erode this piece of uh, artwork, I would say. <laughs> should take a couple seconds. All right, so operation failed. Now, let's start to see what actually is happening over here. I'm really not a programmer, so I can't really tell exactly what's happening here. We're over here, what it is, it maybe uses reset parameters and just ha maybe hit the cook button again. And cook. Oh, okay, maybe I forget to set up the output as saved as for export. So a problem might be coming over here. out let's uh, just name this output for now uh, save again if I had reset parameters and pointing back to heights and cook Hmm. Can't really tell what's going wrong here because I've already tried out the exact same setup and now it's giving me like a different. Okay, show me exposed parameters, please. We got a file here for hell. Maybe it has something to do with a cache. Maybe you're reading like a previous cache and maybe it's being corrupted. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Uh, guy automation and this will name for cache. Or inside, hit accept, click again. And there you go. Uh, you can see sometimes. It's really, really weird and kind of random. I believe there's like a big problem with how the cache is being read. And for example, let's say, okay, so now it's working. You have like a good link. It's actually reading the Tor file properly and just read the, the height information from Houdini and process it through the um, through Gaia and then gets it back into Houdini. All right, so we have these parameters and we want to maybe like kind of play around with this. Okay, so let's make this like kind of be super eroded so that we can see that the parameter is actually working and then we got to crank out the string. Okay, so we've changed the parameters and hit the cook button. It should be able to update, but from my own experience, it doesn't really update because it has some issues with reading the cache and kind of fetching the data back again. So it is actually doing the processing. So you, the height map from Houdini is being spit out. Guy is doing some stuff in the background with it. You can see it's probably going to take a bit longer because we've increased the duration of the erosion. But fetching that height map from Gaia, this is where it gets stuck. This is where it basically just doesn't kind of update, refresh the, 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 the file. And now it's not being refreshed. So if I, for example, point it to maybe, let's create a different folder. I'm just going to make it cache to just so that it reads something new, like kind of refresh. Now there's nothing, and now we still have the same parameters, and we've hit cook. It should completely kind of erode the entire thing. And that's what we're supposed to be getting after changing some parameters. And I believe that is the issue. Um, I've been when I was saying on Facebook, I was like, "Well, the the cache doesn't get really updated." And yeah, that's the, the problem I'm actually having. I'm not exactly sure if I'm doing something wrong because there's 
no tutorial, no documentation related to the this thing. Now that now that that it is updated, and this is supposed to be the result that you would get after moving the sliders eventually and just hitting the cook button, or maybe having an auto cook, for example. The weird part about this is as soon as you hit auto cook, it just directly start cooking, even though you haven't done something. So you have to wait again. <coughs> So yeah, this is the actual issue that I'm having with the, um, the Gaia Bridge so far, and I believe this might be an issue for not only me, maybe some other users out there. And I wanted to demonstrate that just so you can, so, just so you can see, maybe um, investigate and see what's going on with the, the the bridge on Houdini. I believe this is mostly a problem on, Houdini, on the Houdini side on how you fetch the cash and how you deal with the data and how it gets refreshed. Try to look up things in there, and I I'm, I'm actually don't do any Python scripting, so I believe it's probably something to do with how Python, or maybe how you read the cache from the uh, input, hide input somewhere in here. Anyways, I'm not gonna fill too much with this, and I believe the guys at Side Effects would probably be able to solve this quite easily. All right, so this is it for now, and uh, yeah, keep up the good work. And it's really, really cool stuff and very promising stuff. Uh, I can't really, I can't wait to get this to work with Unreal or Unity, and just maybe have an artist like directly kind of sculpt some terrain, hit the cook button, and just get like an updated erosion with all the masks in there, the splat maps, and have everything being like kind of seamlessly integrated, integrated inside of like a proper like a production pipeline for like the landscaping, and maybe using it for like a full open world. Uh, production workflow that that would be like super super powerful all right thank you for watching and uh, hopefully we will get this working and sorted out uh, on the next video and maybe I can like kind of demonstrate some cool stuff and like uh, show like have a like a proper tutorial for the, um, the guys using Gaia or the Houdini guys and maybe start like kind of maybe considering Gaia as like a, a good like kind of tool that could be used for terrain production eventually Alright, thank you for watching and see you guys. See you next time.